Networks over the years have been built something like an egg. It's really hard on the outside, but once you get through that, it's really soft on the inside. I mean, there's no real security in there. You can jump from machine to machine, and there, whatever you want to spread inside that network, you can do it. And that tends to be something that happened out of the border security model that's been used over the years. And for home users, that's especially true. Probably the router uh, that you buy for your Wi-Fi and connecting to your cable modem or whatever, that probably has a firewall on it. But it's all your individual machines, those aren't really protected. And when you have Wi-Fi up, you know, there's a chance of just something coming in just from that. But even more than that, we have a lot of little devices these days that are kind of black boxes themselves. So home assistants, uh, all these little Wi-Fi gadgets, the Wi-Fi enabled toasters, because we need that, apparently. Um, can we really trust all these devices? Well, it'd be nice if we got rid of this border security model, because clearly we can't trust all of them. I mean, not all of them are going to be infected, but one of them might, and all it takes is one. So what you can do is firewall individual machines. And the modern way to do that on Linux machines, such as the Raspberry Pi, is NF tables. Now, IP tables is kind of an older way to do this, uh, but we'll cover the new way to do it with NF tables. And you can still use IP tables if you want, but NF tables is a good thing to learn. So uh, I've created a little uh, NF tables rule set here. And I'll just walk you through uh, how this goes. So notice the shebang line here. We're running SBIN NFT. And that means this is the program that's going to interpret the rest of the file. That's how shebangs work. Uh, you might have seen something like slash bin slash sh or slash bin slash bash. And that means the sh or bash uh, program is going to interpret the file. In this case, we're using NFT. And it's got its own little syntax here for building your firewall rules. So this is just a very simple uh, rule set that just lets certain traffic come into the machine. So first we flush it, flush everything that's there. So we just start fresh. Um, that way it's very predictable for us. And then we start on the uh, INET table, so internet protocols, and the inbound chain. So everything inbound is going to go through this chain. And just the policy is drop, meaning anything that gets through it without otherwise being specifically accepted, it's going to get dropped. And that's generally good security. You want to be deny by default. Now these state CT state. NF tables is a stateful firewall, so it can keep track of connections. When you have a TCP connection uh, that's already gone back and forth to establish that connection, it can keep track of that. And if it is an already established or related connection, according to this rule, it's going to get accepted. Now, if it's in an invalid state, it's going to drop it. And an important thing to know about NFT is that when you hit one of these drop, this happens immediately. This still goes through the rest of the chain. And that can create some weird behavior that you might not expect, but keep that in mind in how you create your rules. Uh, this just says everything over the local host connection, we're gonna accept that. And we'll come back to these uh, ICMP rules a little later. And then we're also going to accept any SSH traffic. So here we're saying the D port, and it's going to map SSH to port 22, because that's the default SSH port. Kind of an important one to remember, if you have a headless machine and you're doing this over SSH, which I am here, and you didn't put this rule in, and now your SSH connection is going to get blocked. Kind of a problem. Um, and if you've got it, nearby you might have to just run and find a spare monitor and keyboard and plug it all in and fix this or restart the vi the device maybe um but if it's uh, not anywhere near you you're gonna have to 
have somebody near it fix it for you, or you're going to have to drive out there yourself and fix it. This can uh, potentially ruin your day if you forget this, so don't forget it. And then the next one we're going to come back to as well. And then we just do some defaults for the forward and outbound chains. So the forward chain is mostly, you're going to see that in NAT setups or machines acting as a router. Generally for individual uh, secured machines, you don't need to worry about this. So we just set the policy to dropped. Likewise, the outbound chain, this is going to filter any outbound traffic. Some people do like to limit what can go out. Uh, generally, it's much easier to just filter on one of either inbound or outbound, and generally it's going to be inbound. And so here we just accept anything outbound. We assume that things running on this machine are kind of okay. Uh, but, you know, there is definitely an argument for further filtering on outbound. Just know it's going to be more complicated. So we won't cover that here. Uh, we'll just run this. So all we need to do is execute it as root. And there, now our traffic is in. And because we have that little SSH uh, command in there, we can still connect over SSH. We're still good there. And we might note two things. First, we won't be able to ping the machine. So this is the IP address of that uh, Raspberry Pi over there. And in this uh, window, I'm just setting in a little WSL2 terminal. And uh, we're not getting anything back on pings. Also, another thing we can try is listening on a port. So here, we're going to start Netcat, which is just a nice little tool for uh, listening or sending uh, information over a TCP port. I think it can do UDP as well. Uh, but here, we're just going to do TCP. We're just going to start listening on port 8000. And then over here, we can try connecting to that. So anything we type here ought to show up over here, except it's not because the firewall is blocking it. So cancel out of that. And let's go back to that NFT tables. And we'll now comment that out. So this is saying we're going to start accepting traffic on port 8000. And another way to do this too is you can do that all at once, which is rather handy. Um, you know, you can do it either way. And then we'll run that. And we'll start listening again. And we still won't be able to ping it. But type up something there, and now it shows up because it was able to connect through the firewall. Now let's try to make ping work. Now, there's some things uh, to keep in mind historically about this. Um, a lot of old firewalls would just block ICMP8 entirely. Uh, there was a common attack called ping of death that basically sent an invalid ICMP packet. And a lot of old... Uh, IP implementations, the stack would not handle that well. So a lot of people started just blocking ICMP entirely. Now the trouble with that is, you know, sometimes you're diagnosing things and you want to know if you can at least ping the machine. And if your firewall is up, you're not going to be able to use that. So there's trade-offs involved. There's always trade-offs in security. And so if we enable these, it's going to allow ICMP, but it's also going to limit it to four per second. And that's just a nice rate limiting thing uh, so that we don't get ping floods, which is another kind of attack that kind of emerged once ping of death was kind of fixed. Um, you can probably still find machines that are vulnerable to ping of death because, you know, stuff doesn't get patched for 30 years. Anyway, um, so we'll just run that and... Now we should be able to ping it. And there we go. And we're sending a lot less than four per second, so we get through just fine. And of course, we can still run our Netcat server. There you go. So um, to be able to install this, probably should start this at the beginning of the video. 
you do app get install nf tables, I already have it installed. So that'll get you that started. Now, if you want to save the firewall rule sets through a reboot, you need to do system control enable nf tables.service. And you run that, and your firewall rules will survive a reboot. Very nice. So that is the basics on how to firewall your machine. Uh, it's fairly quick and easy, just a few things to keep in mind. Uh, glad you watched. Hope it helped. Have a good day.